Hey guys, welcome to a new video of CSAT with Jason. So today we will be looking into the topic of geometry. Geometry is actually a very important topic when it comes to CSAT. UPSC has been asking consistently from this topic. But the problem about geometry is that it is, it is actually a very vast subject. So we cannot learn everything about geometry. So we will be learning the basic things about geometry, the basic things about various shapes and figures, the areas, volumes, etc. And I have also analyzed previous year UPSC questions and accordingly, uh, we'll be looking into the areas where UPSC is consistently asking the question. So when it comes to geometry, these are the uh, major areas that we need to study, the areas that we need to focus depend, uh, as per the, uh, the previous year questions of UPSC. Okay. So when it comes to 2D, two-dimensional figures, we have triangle, we have circle, we have square, we have rectangle. We do have different 2D, uh, other 2D figures as well. But these are the four. Uh, figures that you need to focus you need to study about the area you need to study about the uh, various other things uh, about all these figures and when it comes to three-dimensional figures uh, you have cube cuboid sphere and cylinder these are some of the common 3d figures that has been asking in uh, various uh, question papers okay so we need to when it comes to 3d figures you know that there will be volume as well apart from the area so these are the things that we will be studying in this uh, lecture okay so first let us talk about triangles so let us see what are the different types of triangles first so triangles we can classify the triangle according to their side and according to their angle so by side we can divide the triangles into equilateral triangle isosceles triangle and scalene triangle so equilateral triangle is those triangle in which all the sides are equal isosceles triangle are those triangles in which two sides are equal and if no, none of the sides are equal, it is known as scalene triangle. Now, according to angle also, we can divide triangles into three. That is acute, right and obtuse triangle. Acute triangle is those triangle in which all the angles are less than 90 degree. And right triangle is in which one of the angle is 90 degree. And in an obtuse angle, one of the angle will be greater than 90 degree. So this classification of triangle is actually important. Actually, triangle is one of the most important topic inside geometry that UPSC has been uh, used to pick, pick questions more often. Okay, so you need to uh, learn about triangles uh, more. Now, let us see the angles in a triangle. So, let us let me draw a triangle first. This is a triangle. This is triangle ABC. So, we have three angles in a triangle. If you add all these angles, you will get 180 degree. So, you will be knowing this, right? Now I will uh, I will try uh, I will add something here. Let us consider this as an isosceles triangle. Let's say that this side is equal to this side. Okay, AC is equal to BC. In that case, this angle which is opposite to this side AC and this angle which is opposite to side AB will be equal. Okay, so that is a important concept that you need to understand. So in an isosceles triangle, we have two sides equal. And the angles opposite to those sides will also be equal. So two angles will also be equal. Okay. Now let us consider it as an um, equilateral triangle. That means let us say that AC is equal to BC is equal to AB. So all the sides of this triangle is equal. In that case, this all angles will be equal and they, they will be 60 degree. Okay. So this you need to understand. Now, similarly, when it comes to angle, the concept of interior and exterior angle is also very much important. So, interior angle is already, I have talked about the interior angles. These are the angles inside a triangle. So, that these are the interior angles of a triangle. Now, I am drawing a triangle like this. Now, I am extending this side like this and this side like this and this side like this. Let's say that this is triangle ABC. Okay. Let's say that this angle is a this angle is b this angle is c and let's say that we have we got an angle like this right let's say this is x we got an angle like this let's say this is y and we got an angle like this let's say this is z so here x y and z are known as the exterior angles of a triangle and a b c are known as the interior angles of a triangle now we know that a plus b plus c that is the sum of interior angles of a triangle is 180 degree Similarly, the sum of exterior angles of a triangle that is x plus y plus z will be equal to 360 degree. Okay, this you need to understand. Now, another thing that you need to understand is that the exterior angle will be equal to sum of the two opposite interior angle. That means here this exterior angle x will be equal to sum of 
interior opposite angles that means here a and c are interior opposite angles that means x will be equal to a plus c similarly y will be equal to b plus c and here z z will be equal to a plus b so this also you need to understand this concept is also very important now let us see the area of a triangle actually we can calculate the area of a triangle using two methods one is using the base and height and another is the heron's formula so let us see the first method so let's say this is a triangle abc let's say this side is b this is the base bc we are taking bc as the base let's say this side uh, this, it is b and this height is h then the area of a triangle is half base into height okay half bh so this you will be knowing now there is also another formula known as the heron's formula if all the sides of a triangle are given then you can use heron's formula to find out the area of a triangle so let's say this is a triangle let's say this side is a this side is b and this side is c then heron's formula according to heron's formula area is equal to root of s into s minus a into s minus b into s minus c we know what is a b and c we already know these are the sides of triangle then what is s s is known as the semi perimeter that means a plus b plus c is the perimeter of the triangle right then a plus b plus c by 2 is the semi perimeter so s is a plus b plus c by 2 so in this way also you can find out the area of a triangle so in a question if the uh, all the sides of a triangle are given then you can use heron's formula okay now let us also see the the concept of drawing triangle inside a circle actually this concept is very important upsc has asked question from this topic as well okay so let us say this is a circle now i am drawing a triangle inside the circle such that the diameter of the triangle sorry diameter of the circle will be one of the side of the triangle so let's say this is a circle this is the center of the circle let's say this is the diameter one of the diameter of the circle now using this diameter as one of the side of the triangle i am drawing a triangle like this okay so we can draw like this like this in all these triangle in both of the triangle that i have drawn one of the side is the diameter of the circle right so in this case this angle will be 90 degree so this is actually a very important concept okay and if I am ta taking a point here in, in here in the circle and I am drawing a triangle like this such that one of the diameter is one of its side then this will be a right angle triangle this will be 90 degree this concept is actually very important so this also you need to understand so finally let us look into Pythagoras theorem as well so many of you will already be knowing what Pythagoras theorem is if you are considering a right angle to triangle let us assume that this is the right angle then the side opposite to the right angle is known as the hypotenuse let's say this is side this is a the length of that side is a let's say this is b and let's say this is c then according to pythagoras theorem a square is equal to b square plus c square so this you need to understand by using the concept of pythagoras theorem you can solve questions on geometry as well as questions on sense of direction actually when it comes to csat pythagoras theorem will help you mostly in sense of direction so if you want to so in that video in the lecture of a sense of direction i have detailed about pythagoras theorem and also about pythagorean triplets and how to find out this pythagorean triplets easily so if you want to uh, know more about pythagoras theorem you can go and watch the the video on uh, sense of direction okay so now let us look into quadrilaterals okay so quadrilateral is quadrilaterals are those figures in which they have four sides okay so we have different quadrilaterals we have square right we have rectangle square is a quadrilateral in, in which all the sides are equal and all angles are 90 degree right now so rectangle is a quadrilateral in which opposite sides are equal and all the angles are 90 degree then we have the parallelogram in which the opposite sides of a quadrilateral are parallel to each other then you have trapezium okay in which two sides are parallel okay then you have rhombus and kite rhombus uh, the, the opposite sides are parallel and all the sides are equal as well so actually here you need to understand more about square rectangle only parallelogram upsc hasn't asked any question on parallelogram the area of parallelogram and, and everything 
so just understand the concept of square and rectangle when i am saying about understanding the concept you need to know about the area of the figure then you need to know about the perimeter of the figure as well so these two are the major thing that you need to learn okay so now let us look into different correlatal in detail so let us look take uh, square first so as you know square is a correlatal in which all the sides are equal and all the angles are 90 degree let's say the side of this square is a that means all the side will be a now here area of the square is equal to a into a which is equal to a square and perimeter of the square is equal to perimeter means you have to add all the outs outer sides that means a plus a plus a plus a you will get 4a so this is the area of a square a square and perimeter is 4a so this you need to by heart now when it comes to a rectangle you know a rectangle what a rectangle is right so in a rectangle means opposite sides are equal and all the angles are 90 degree so all angles are 90 degree if this is a then sorry let's say this is l this is the length of the triangle let's consider it as l so this will also be l and this is the breadth of the triangle let's say this is b then this will also be b okay so area of a rectangle is equal to length into breadth lb and perimeter of a rectangle is equal to we have to add all the outer sides l plus b plus l plus b you will get 2 into l plus b so this is the perimeter of a rectangle okay so now let us look into a parallelogram so parallelogram means opposite sides are equal and parallel so i have drawn a parallelogram like this as i already mentioned parallelogram is not that much important when it comes to upsc as uh, as per the analysis of the previous year questions you have to focus more on square and rectangle but anyways we don't know how upsc is going to ask the question so just remember the area of a parallelogram okay so even if you forget the area there is a simple method to find out the area of a parallelogram so i will teach you that method okay so let's say this is the base of the parallelogram so this will also be b because opposite sides are equal and parallel right now let us assume that this is height h and this is height h of the parallelogram now if i divide this into two triangles like this okay i am dividing this parallelogram into two triangles now the area of this triangle is half base into height that is half b into h again area of this triangle will also be half base into height so if you add these two things you will get base into height so base into height is the area of a parallelogram so just remember this thing now if you come to trapezium trapezium is a correlateral in which two sides are parallel so here these two sides are parallel now let us assume that the length of this side is b and length of this side is a and the height here is h and height here is h okay so again i am dividing just like parallelogram i am dividing this into two triangles the area of this triangle will be half base into height okay half b into h again area of this triangle will also be half base into height so here half into base is here a and height is actually this height right this height is also h this is same as h so you will get half a into h so that means I am taking h cons uh, h uh, common so you will get h by 2 into a plus b so this is the area of a trapezium okay so let us now look into circle circle is also a very important concept when it comes to geometry okay so we know that a circle has a radius and a diameter right and we know radius is equal to diameter divided by 2 so when it comes to a circle you should know what is the circumference of a circle and what is the area of a circle so circumference is nothing but the uh, perimeter of the circle and it is equal to 2 pi r 2 into pi into r r is the radius and pi you can take it as 3.14 or 22 by 7 okay now we should know also the area of the circle area of a circle is equal to pi r square okay so this you might be knowing many of you might might be knowing already what is the area and circumference of the circle so here another concept is there which is actually very important it is the segment of a circle for example if i am dividing this circle i am cutting a piece here like this 
just like uh, how we cut uh, a piece for uh, of a cake during a, a birthday celebration or how we cut the slice of a pizza and all we'll be cutting like this right so each of that piece is known as a segment so this is a segment now if this segment makes an angle theta with the center let us see what is the length of this arc okay this is known as the arc length and we should also know what is the area of this segment so let us see how we can solve it so actually there is a formula for that but you don't need to by heart the formula and all you can uh, find out the area of the segment and the arc length using the concept or by logic so how let us see how we can do it so i have already told you that the segment is making an angle theta with the uh, th theta with the center right we know that the total angle this total angle will be 360 degree so when 360 degree is there that is if we are considering total angle that means it is it is the full circle so 360 degree corresponds to 2 pi r okay so theta degree we we need to know what does theta degree corresponds to so theta degree corresponds to what so just cross multiply that means x is equal to theta divided by 360 into 2 pi r so in this way you can find out what is the arc length similarly you can also find out what is the area we know that for 360 degree the area is pi r square so we should know what is the area for theta okay so area into just cross multiply that is area into 360 is equal to theta into pi r square so area of the segment is equal to theta divided by 360 into pi r square so in this way you can find out the area and the arc length of a segment okay so this is also very important when it comes to circle now le let us look into three dimensional figures okay so three dimensional figures uh, as i already mentioned the most important things are cube cuboid and cylinder so let us see what a cube is now when it comes to three dimensional figures you should know three things one is the total area of the figure then second is the curved surface area and third is the volume so we will see each of them okay so first let us draw a cube so let's say this is a cube okay of side a so this will be a this will be a this will be a all this side will be a okay now area the total surface area there is actually area is divided into two one is total surface area and one is curved surface area so you should know the concept of both you should know what is curved surface area and what is the total surface area so curved surface area is the area of these faces that is this face this face and the back face and this side face that is total uh, that is when we uh, minus the top surface and the bottom surface from the total surface area you will get the curved surface area so curved surface area doesn't include the top and bottom faces okay total surface area includes all the faces so here we know that the area of this face one face will be a square okay so in curved surface area of a cube you have four faces that means it will be 4 a square so when it comes to total surface area you have to include the top and bottom face that means there will be six faces so it will be 6 a square okay 6 a square now we should also know what is the volume of a cube so volume of a cube is equal to a cube actually volume is the bottom surface area into height here bottom surface area is a square height is a so a square into a you will get a cube so in this way we can find out the volume of a cube okay so now let us look into the concept of cuboid here so i am drawing a cuboid first so let's say this is a cuboid so the length of the cuboid is l the breadth of the cuboid is b and height of the cuboid is h so here let us see what is the curved surface area what is the total surface area and what is the volume now as i already mentioned curved surface area doesn't include the top face and the bottom face so these two faces won't be included now let us see what is the curved surface area of what is the surface area of all other faces so curved surface area is equal to this face the area will be length into height l into h this will be breadth into height then on the back side back side again there will be length into height and this side it is base into height so the curved surface area is from here we can uh, 
uh, it will be 2 LH plus 2 BH so I am taking 2L as common so 2L into sorry I am taking H common that is 2H into L plus B so this is the curved surface area of a cuboid now let us see what is the total surface area so in the total surface area we need to include these two phases so this is L into B this is L and this is B so this area is L into B again bottom also there will be L into B so here total surface area will become 2HL plus 2HB plus 2BL 2LB so it is 2 into LB plus BH plus LH so this is the total surface area of a cuboid now volume as you know it is length into breadth into height LBH so now let us see the concept of cylinder okay so again for cylinder we need to learn about curved surface area total surface area and volume some students actually feel it difficult to uh, by heart these formulas for the uh, different curved surface area and volume of the cylinder so uh, so what happens is that say they sometimes forget the formula and if a question comes from cylinder they won't be able to answer it but actually if you know how these fo formulas are derived you can actually uh, derive this formula and then do the uh, question okay so i will show you how to remember this actually easily so let me first draw a cylinder so i am drawing a cylinder this is our cylinder okay so let's say height of the cylinder is h and the radius of cylinder is r okay now here we need to first find out the curved surface area of the cylinder so again curved for curved surface area we shouldn't include the top face and the bottom face that is these two these two circles we shouldn't um, we shouldn't include so what i am going to do is i am cutting this cylinder let's us, let us assume that this cylinder is made from paper okay so i am cutting this cylinder here then i am opening up the cylinder and i am placing it like that so our cylinder will become like this okay with this as h this will be the h because i am opening up the cylinder and placing it on a uh, plane okay so this height this height will be this height and this length will be the circumference of this circle right because i am cutting and opening up so this circumference will be this so this circumference is actually 2 pi r the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r so then what is the curved surface area it will be the this area right so this area is 2 pi r into h that is 2 pi r h so this is how the formula 2 pi r h came so the curved surface area of a cylinder is 2 pi r h okay now we need to find out the total surface area so here in curved surface area we only took this area we haven't taken the area in the top and bottom so just add this area and this area with curved surface area that is 2 pi r h plus this is pi r square and this is also pi r square so 2 pi r square so what will happen we can take 2 pi r common that is 2 pi r into h plus r so this is how this formula came for total surface area now we need to find out the volume of cylinder again volume is actually the bottom surface area or the base area into height here base area is pi r square because it's a circle so pi r square height is h pi r square into h so this is how the formula came the volume of the cylinder okay to pi r square h so this is how you need to remember these formulas now let us look into con so con just uh, just know the curved surface area of the con actually con is a shape like this right con will be like this so curved surface area means this area we shouldn't include this surface uh, this surface the bottom surface we shouldn't include so curved surface area of a con is actually pi r l okay and bottom surface area is pi r square right so the total surface area will be pi r l plus pi r square so that is equal to pi r into l plus r now volume of a con is actually one third of the volume of a cylinder that is 1 by 3 into pi r square h so con is actually not that much important but just if you can remember just remember the formulas for curved surface area total surface area and volume and just remember that volume is 1 by third the volume of a con is 1 by third that of the volume of a cylinder so if you know the volume of a cylinder you can directly take it as 1 by 3 into pi r square h okay 
now let us look into the concept of sphere so sphere it is actually the globe like thing so this is a sphere right so the volume here actually there is only one surface for a sphere so there is no curved surface area and total surface area. there is only one area which is total surface area so total surface area of a sphere is actually 4 pi r square and volume of a sphere is actually 4 by 3 pi r cube so this if you can remember just remember these formulas okay now there is also the concept of hemisphere it is similar to that of sphere it is half of a sphere okay so half of a sphere i cut a sphere into two and this is one of the half so here one thing that you need to remember is that in the earlier thing when it was a sphere there was only one area okay so you have to take only total surface area but when it comes to hemisphere it there is two areas there is an area in this, this there is this surface and there is a bottom surface as well so there are two surfaces so there will be two surface areas so curved surface area will come here so curved surface area of a hemisphere will be half of that of the tot, uh, curved surface area of a or total surface area of a sphere so curved surface area is 2 pi r square okay now total surface area means we need to add this area this is pi r square we need to add pi r square to 2 pi r square so that is 3 pi r square now when it comes to volume it will be half of the volume of the sphere that is it is 2 by 3 pi r cube so these are the formulas for a hemisphere this also if you can remember just remember that okay so now let us look into some small concepts of polygon so polygon is actually uh, the figures with different number of sides that is a triangle is a polygon with three sides square is a polygon with four sides pentagon is a uh, polygon with five sides so this is the different kinds of polygons okay so here you need to understand one thing that is if i am draw a triangle like this you know the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degree we already told that now when it comes to a square the sum of the interior angles will be 360 degree because all the angles are 90 degrees so 90 into 4 is 360 degree so now when it comes to a rectangle again all the sides all the angles are 90 degrees so the sum will be 360 degree right so now when it comes to a pentagon that means it has got five sides okay we have there will be five angle the number of angles will be equal to number of sides okay so there will be five ang of angles if you add all these angles you will get 540 degree now when it comes to hexagon hexagon has six sides okay those that means there will be six angles as well and some of all these angles will be 720 degree so in this way it is going so there is actually a, a small formula to understand this one the sum of interior angles of a polygon will be n minus 2 into 180 degree okay n minus 2 into 180 degree for example if i am considering a, a triangle n is equal to the number of sides which is 3 n is equal to 3 here so 3 minus 2 into 180 is 180 so if i am considering a, a square or a rectangle n is number of sides which is equal to 4 so 4 minus 2 2 into 180 is 360 degree so that's how you got 360 degree so this is a, actually a small formula to uh, find out the sum of interior angles of given any given polygon okay now another thing that you need to understand here is that if it is a regular polygon that is a regular polygon means the sum of sorry the regular polygon means all the sides will be equal that means a regular triangle means it is an equilateral triangle that means all the sides of triangle is equal okay a regular square means square is anyway it's all the sides will be equal so when it comes to a pentagon a regular pentagon means uh, all the sides of the pentagon will be equal so in this way this is known as the regular polygon so in a regular polygon since all the sides are equal all the angles will also be equal so if you if you want to find out the one of the angle of a regular polygon there is an easy way we know n minus 2 into 180 is the sum of all the interior angles of a polygon so one angle will be equal to one angle of a regular polygon is equal to n minus 2 into 180 divided by n because there will be n number of angles and all the angles are equal so if you divide this formula by n then you will get one angle of a regular polygon 
Now there is one more thing that you need to understand here. That is the sum of exterior angles. Already in the case of triangle, I already told you what exterior angles are, right? So if I am drawing like this, in this triangle, then this is an exterior angle, this is an exterior angle, and this is an exterior angle. And sum of all this exterior angle was equal to 360 degree, right? So here, if I am drawing like this, okay? If I am drawing like this, then this, then this, and then this, all these are exterior angle of this square. If I add all these uh, exterior angles, you will get 360 degree. So whatever the polygon is, the sum of exterior angles will always be 360 degree. Sum of interior angles is n minus 2 into 180 and sum of exterior angles is always equal to 360 degree. So this you, that, this you need to understand. So now let us look into the last concept of this topic that is conversions. Conversions is actually very important because UPSC has asked multiple questions from this area. So here you need you need to understand how to convert from one unit to another. Okay, so we know that one meter is equal to 100 centimeter. Also, one meter is equal to 1000 mm. Okay, and one centimeter is equal to 10 mm. So these are some basic things. You need to understand these things. You need to know these things. Okay. So if I want to know what is one meter square is equal to, one meter square is equal to how many centimeter square or how many millimeter square, then what you need to do? You need to, we here, one meter is equal to 100 centimeter. We need to find out what is one meter square, then just square this one. Okay, that means this is 10 square, 10 square whole square is 10 raised to 4 centimeter square. Okay, now again, what is 1 meter square is equal to how many millimeter square what you need to do just square this one so this is this is 10 cube 10 cube whole square is 10 raised to 6 so this is 10 raised to 6 millimeter square again if i want to find out what 1 meter cube equal to how many centimeter cube or how many millimeter cube what you need to do just cube this one that is 10 square whole cube is 10 raised to 6 centimeter square and sorry centimeter cube and 1 meter cube is equal to here also you need to put a cube that is this is 10 cube 10 cube whole, co whole cube is 10 raised to 9 so 10 raised to 9 millimeter cube so this is how you need to uh, find out the conversions again some other things also you need to understand to solve problems that is 1 meter cube is equal to 1000 liters that means if you take a uh, tank if you take a tank which is having which is having 1 meter length 1 meter breadth and 1 meter height it will be able to hold thousand liters in it okay and also one liter is equal to thousand centimeter cube this also you need to know because for using this concepts we have we can solve some questions okay so one li one uh, one meter cube is equal to thousand liters and one liter is equal to thousand centimeter cube okay and one liter is also equal to thousand milliliters okay thousand milliliters and one hectare, one hectare is equal to 10,000 meter square. So normally we uh, tell the area of land in hectares, right? So one hectare is actually the area of a field which is having 100 meter length and 100 meter breadth. So 100 into 100 is 10,000 meter square. Okay, that is one hectare. So these are some of the concepts. So uh, the thing about geometry is that you need to understand these are all basic concepts so you just need to understand these basic concepts and using these concepts and using your logic you can solve these different questions so let us now solve some UPSC questions from geometry so let us solve some questions now so this is from UPSC 2022 there are eight equidistant points on a circle so I have drawn a circle and I have put eight points here okay how many right angled triangles can be drawn using these points as vertices okay we need to take these points as vertices and taking the diameter as one of the triangle okay we need to take diameter as one of the side of the triangle so let us see how we can do so i am first drawing this as the diameter okay i am considering this as the diameter so we know that i already told you the concepts of triangles inside a circle so if i draw a triangle like this using this as vertices, then what happens is that all the given points all the vertices are the given points right so given points on the circle so this is a triangle and this will be a right angled triangle again this is a triangle right angled triangle 
this is a right angled triangle this is a right angled triangle this is a right angled triangle and this is also a right angled triangle so there are six right angled triangles here okay so now i am uh, removing all these things now i am considering so we already considered this as the diameter first now i am considering this as the diameter again considering this as the diameter i can draw six right angled triangles so again there will be six in this way in this way i am drawing this as a diameter i will get six triangles if i am taking this as the diameter i will get again six triangles if i am taking this as the diameter i will get again get six triangles if i am taking this as the diameter also i will get six triangles so there will be total six into four 24 right angle triangles we can draw okay so this is how you need to solve the question now let us take another question this is also from 2022 this was actually a trickier question let us see the question so consider the following statements in respect to a triangle sheet triangular sheet of length 20 centimeter and breadth 8 centimeter so i am drawing this sheet so length is 20 centimeter and breadth is 8 centimeter now there is a statement one says it is possible to cut the sheet exactly into four square sheet it says that we can cut this sheet into four square sheet so here this side is eight centimeter so actually this is a logical question there is nothing much so you need to think and you need to answer this question so we know that this side this side of this rectangle the breadth of the rectangle is eight so if i am drawing like this taking this much as eight then we will get this as a square okay we need to see whether we can divide it into four square sheets so this will be a square again if i am taking eight here this will again be a square so i got two squares now eight plus eight is 16 so balance four will be here and this side is eight now if i am di dividing this like this okay if i am dividing like this this will become four and this will become four again this is a square with side 4 this is a square with side 4 ok so actually it is possible to cut it into 4 square sheets now the thing is that here what happened was that in the in 2022 UPSC question most of the students got this wrong so whomever I have talked to they got it wrong because they took it as 4 equal sheets 4 equal square sheets so it is actually not possible to cut it into four equal square sheets that is correct because here there are two squares of eight centimeter side and two squares of four centimeter side but the question says that or the statement says that it is possible to cut the sheet into four square sheet doesn't say whether the square sheet is equal or not so that is actually possible if the statement was it is possible to cut the sheet into two, four equal square sheet then it was wrong okay so this statement one is correct so now let us take this statement 2. Statement 2 says that it is possible to cut the sheet into 10 triangular sheets of equal if of equal area. So there it says equal area. So this is 8 and this is 20. Now let's say I am divided into, into uh, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I am dividing it into 5 parts. So 20 divided by, by 5 is 4, uh, 4. So each of this part will be having 4. And this side is 8. Now if I am dividing like this. Okay. I am dividing like this. I got 10 triangles. Right. I got 10 triangles. And each area will be equal. So this is also correct. So answer was both 1 and 2 in this case. Now let us look into a different question. This is from UPSC 2021. It is actually a very simple question. If you know the conversions really well. That is why I told you that conversions is actually very important. I think in 2019 or 2020 UPSC again asked a similar question based on conversions just on conversions so if you know the conversions really well sometimes you you will if you are lucky enough you will get a question on cons conversions and you can do it in very is uh, you can do it very easily okay so let us take this question here it says that a co cubical vessel of side 1 meter is filled completely with water how many milliliters of water is contained in it so we know that it's a cubical vessel of 1 meter so its volume will be 1 meter cube okay we know that 1 meter cube is equal to 1000 liter okay here the question asked how many milliliter of water is there so we know that 1 meter cube contains 1000 liter and we know that 1 liter is equal to 1000 milliliter 
so here what we need to do is we need to multiply thousand with thousand so you, this much milliliter will be there so that is how many zeros will be there six zeros will be there so option d was the right answer so in, this is a very simple question if you know the conversions really well now let us take another question this is from upsc 2020 so here it says that let x and y be the volumes m and b the masses of two metallic cubes p and q so we have two metallic cubes p and q and its volumes are x and y x is the volume of p and y is the volume of q and masses are m and n m is the mass of p and n is the mass of q each side is each side of q so let us take the side now so let's assume that the side of p is small p now q is the each side of q is two times that of p so q is two times that of p so if the side of q is small q then it will be equal to two times p and we know that volume is equal to cube of the side for a cube uh, for a cube the volume is equal to uh, cube of that side right so here side is p so volume is equal to p cube here side is 2p so volume is equal to 2p whole cube 2 cube is 8 so you will get 8p cube okay so now it say also says that the mass of q is 2 times that of p so mass of p is m so mass of q will be n is equal to 2m now it says that u is equal to m by x so u is equal to m by x and v is equal to n by y so m n by x i am writing it as we know m i am taking it as m and x i am taking it as p cube so i am writing like this now n we know that it is equal to 2m so 2m divided by y we know that it is 8p cube so this is 8p cube so this will become m divided by 4p cube and we know m by p cube is u so we will get v is equal to u by 4 or u is equal to 4v so here option a was the right answer okay so guys thank you so much we i'll be coming with a new video soon and if you like the video please do subscribe share and support thank you